All right, so today I'm gonna assume that the most of you out there do not want to work your job and your business. It wasn't your intention to work your job and your business for a prolonged period of time, but you're still trying to do that. And what you're finding is, is that the more time you put into your job, the less time you put into your business, and your business is not maturing into the business, the successful business that you had envisioned. So how do you get out of where you are right now and start moving toward putting more time into your business? Well, that's exactly what I wanna to talk to you about today in this video, how to really make it in the trucking industry. Not just say you have a business and kind of half-hearted put efforts into that, but to really be in business, that business be your source of income, a major source of income, flourishing in business, how do you really do that in the trucking industry? So we're gonna talk about that today. So come on inside, sit back, relax, and let's get right into the business. All right, so now I'm gonna share some things with you that you probably don't wanna hear, especially if you are a part-time business owner. This probably is gonna ruffle your feathers a little bit, but I have to say it so that you understand where I'm coming from. Now here is what's important. It doesn't mean because I say this, this is what it is, this is the law, but it just means that it's how I see it. It's how I approach my own business and I kind of saw the results of what I got based off of what I did, so I'm sharing that with you today. Now to me, if you really want to make it in the trucking industry, one of the first things that you have to take a look at doing, if you're doing it part-time because you have a job, you have to look at targeting putting a target on your job. I know that's hard to hear, especially when your job is your main source of income. It's hard to really look at that for a lot of people. But the whole reason why you would entertain that is because you believe that your business has the potential to outproduce your job. You believe in yourself enough that you know that. So when you understand that about yourself, then you have no problem with putting a target on the job, saying, hey, I'm looking to quit this job at this time. But now, of course, that has to mean you're moving your business toward earning income. Your business is earning income already. And now you can walk away from the job because of the production of the business. But the, the business will drive what you're able to do as far as walking away from the job because you're not just gonna make a rash decision and walk away when you don't have an income replacement for the job, right? So the whole idea is to put yourself, put your energy, put your effort behind your business. The more time you can put in the business, the more you can grow that business, the more the business will produce. But as long as you have a job and your job is the main source of income, it will get the most of your attention. Your business will always be something that could be. So in order for it to come into its own, for it to be itself, I believe that your time has to be spent in that business. Most of your time has to be spent in that business. Not saying you can't start off part-time, but you certainly need to be looking at, okay, how can I spend more time on my business because we understand that the more time we're able to put into it the more chance we have to grow it into the successful business owners or the successful business i should say we want it to be and of course the owners we want to be now as you might already be able to tell i think that time is one of if not the most important component or aspect to really making it in the trucking industry and once you get your time back once you take the time back and you no longer have to split time between your job and the business, then you can focus on growing your business. You can put all of your energy into growing that business. And I think that puts you in a much better position than it does if you're splitting time between the job and the business. Which moves us on to the next point that I wanna make is understanding cost, cost management, managing the cost of your business. I cannot harp on this one enough because it's so important to your success as a business owner. I don't care what type of business owner you are, you have to understand your cost. And as a business owner, we're always evaluating the things that we're paying for as a business because you may find that you don't need whatever it is that you're looking at. You know, if you're taking a look at some component, some part of your business, and you've had this thing in place, you've been paying for it for a while, and then when you look at the value that it brings, you might say to yourself, hey, I don't think it's necessary for me to continue to pay 
for this, whatever it may be, because it's not bringing the value that you may have anticipated. So get rid of it, cut it. Because when you cut costs, you actually put more money back into the pocket of the business owner, which of course is you. You're putting more money into your own pocket when you start to cut your cost. So we always want to take a look at the things that we're paying for, and then if it's necessary, if we see that we can keep doing what it is that we're doing without what it is that we're paying for, let's stop paying for it. Let's start moving toward streamlining our business, making it as slim as possible, as efficient as possible by cutting the things that are unnecessary. And it's not just about cutting costs. As business managers, we have to take a look at growth opportunities, potential to grow our business, and sometimes we have to spend money in areas that we see that there's good growth potential. You might look at your business if you're a freight broker and say, hey, I'm gonna add an additional TMS. I'm gonna go in and get a, a different type of TMS that I'm currently using, something that I can offer more services to my shipper. I'll have more capability and that makes me a better freight broker. So you might want to look at that at some point. If you're a truck driver, you might say, hey, you know what? Now might be a good time for me to bring on additional assets. So you might start positioning yourself, positioning the business so that you can purchase additional assets because we always have to be looking for growth opportunities. It's not just about cutting. A good manager will add things as he see fit, as he sees that these may give him a good opportunity to grow his business, he's gonna make investments into those things. So we always wanna take a look at that and start operating our business in the sense of where is the next opportunity? How can I position myself for that opportunity? All right, so next let's talk about being aggressive, being on the offense, taking some risk. Because here's what you have to understand. Right now, you are at level one in your business and you're trying to go to level two. So in order to go to level two, you're gonna to have to learn some things and be willing to take some risk. Be willing to make yourself uncomfortable. Nobody knows anything about you right now. If people do, it's a small number of people. So we have to get out there and get into bigger pools so we can be recognized, so that our business can make money. That is what we have to understand is that it is priority number one to put your business in position to start making money. Because as the business starts to produce money, then you can start to have some options. Right now you don't have very many options because the business is not producing yet. But as soon as it does, it increases your options. So the focus should be is to go out and say, look, I'm not afraid to be aggressive. I'm not afraid to take some risk here. I'm not afraid to start engaging customers, whether that's on the trucking side or the freight broker inside. I might need to start engaging shippers direct, right? Because I know as a trucker, that's gonna benefit me a whole lot more than if I go through a freight broker. Or if I'm a freight broker, I look at it and say, you know what? I'm not gonna be afraid to venture outside of just one type of freight. Sometimes when we first start, we just wanna be in one area. But when you look at refrigerated freight and dry van freight, it's pretty much the same, except one has a reefer, the other one doesn't. So it's not like it's gonna be that much of a difference when you're running dry van and reefer freight. As a matter of fact, you can run dry van freight inside of the reefer. Just turn the reefer off. So venture outside of just one type of freight so that you can have some diversity amongst your customer base. Next up, let's talk about key performance indicators. As a business owner, what you'll soon realize is that flying by the seat of your pants, just trying to feel things out, that's a good way to start, but you don't wanna stay that way for too long. You wanna have a method to your madness and you need to be able to take a look at key performance indicators. These are indicators that tell you what's going on with your performance. And one of the main performers that we want to keep an eye on is our overall income. And then of course, you wanna take a look at what your net income is. Bottom line is we're gonna keep an eye on that income, right? But there are drivers of the income. There are certain things that you do every day to put you in a position, your business in position to make money. What are those? For example, if you're a freight broker or owner operator, and you contact Shippers Direct, one of your KPIs that you probably wanna pay attention to is your sales lead to close ratio. The number of sales leads you have to actually call 
before you get a customer. So let's just say you had a sales lead to close ratio of 25 to one. Now, of course, that would mean that you would have to put yourself on average in front of 25 customers before you could expect to get a customer. KPIs, key performance indicators, make sure you identify what those are for your business because if you pay attention to the KPIs, they'll tell a story. They'll tell you exactly what you need to know and help you make the best decision for you and your business. Next up, let's talk about customers. There's nothing more important to a business than having customers, customers that are willing to do business with you because you can't make money unless you have customers. Now, what type of customers you have is key. Sometimes we have customers that send freight to us via email. They'll say, hey, Brandon, I need a quote on this lane, or they'll send out a customer spreadsheet with different lanes for me to provide quotes on. That's all right, there's nothing wrong with that, except for I have to wait for that shipper to send that email. But they may send the email, they may not send the email, and who knows, I may not even be on the distro just yet. I might not have been added to the distro, so I need a more sure way of being able to access my shipper's freight which leads me to the other type of customer that I was mentioning before. There are some customers that allow for you to have a username and password to their TMS system. So now you go in and access the freight that's in your region, the freight that has been assigned to you, areas that have been assigned to you, that freight is sitting there and you just go in at your leisure and set up freight to move, go in and bid on freight. So that's a whole lot better than having to wait for shippers to send freight to you. You're basically going in and picking the freight that you want, moving the days or moving freight on the days that you want to move it instead of being subject to an email, an email that you may get and you may not get. So now we've reached the last point that I'll make on this topic, and that is small freight brokerages and trucking companies usually fail for two reasons. The first reason is because they don't manage the business properly. The reason why they don't manage the business properly is because they don't have business management skills. And I know it. Everybody says, I've done this before. I know how to operate a business. But they don't have basic business management skills. So it's important to know you who you are and then say, you know what? I might not have those skills now, but I'm going to train myself. I'm going to practice and I am going to acquire those skills because I need those skills in order to be successful. The second reason why small freight brokers and trucking companies fail is because they fail to manage the business's money, right? It's always, always, always going to be a problem if you fail to manage the money of the business. You're always going to have problems, right? And sometimes we can't even manage our own personal finances. Now we have a business to manage as well and the finances of that business. I think it just passes the common sense test that we become more and more savvy about our money, study money, to understand it and how it works. That way it positions you to be the best money manager for yourself and your business. And remember this, it's not necessarily just about how much money you make. Making a lot of money is good, but it's more about how much you keep out of what you make. Because a lot of people make a lot of money, but they don't have much of it. How much of the money you make do you keep? That's the question that you have to answer. Have a great day, have a great rest of your week, and remember this, change is not about going into the, to the beginning and changing the beginning. We can't do that. What we can do is start right now, change the decisions that we're making, change ourselves, and we can change the ending into whatever we want it to be. See you at the very top, because the bottom is much too crowded.